In the moment of transition between life and death, only one thing changes. You lose the momentum of the biochemical cycles that keep the machinery running. In the moment before death, you are still composed of the same thousand trillion trillion items as in the moment after death. The only difference is that their neighborly network of social interactions has ground to a halt. At that moment, the atoms begin to drift apart, no longer enslaved to the goals of keeping up a human form. The interacting pieces that once constructed your body begin to unravel like a sweater, each thread spiraling off in a different direction. Following your last breath, those thousand trillion trillion atoms begin to blend into the earth around you. As you degrade, your atoms become incorporated into new constellations, the leaf of a staghorn fern, a speckled snail shell, a kernel of maize, a beetle's mandible, a waxen bloodroot, a ptarmigan's tail feather. But it turns out your thousand trillion trillion atoms were not an accidental collection. Each was labeled as composing you and continues to be so wherever it goes. So you're not gone, you're simply taking on different forms. Instead of your gestures being the raising of an eyebrow or a blown kiss, now a gesture might consist of a rising gnat, a waving wheat stalk, the inhaling lung of a breaching beluga whale. Your manner of expressing joy might become a seaweed sheet playing on a lapping wave, a pendulous funnel dancing from a cumulonimbus, a flapping grunion birthing, a glossy river pebble gliding around an eddy. From your present clumped point of view, this afterlife may sound unnervingly distributed, but in fact, it is wonderful. You can't imagine the pleasure of stretching your redefined body across vast territories, ruffling your grasses and bending your pine branch and flexing an egret's wings while pushing a crab toward the surface through coruscating shafts of light. Just as in your current life, the downside is that you are always in flux. As creatures degrade and your fruits fall and rot, you become capable of new gestures and lose others. Your lover might drift away from you in the migratory flight of tropical birds, a receding stampede of wintering elk, or a creek that quietly pokes its head under the ground and pops up somewhere unknown to you. Many of your same problems apply. Temptation, anguish, anger, distrust, vice, and don't forget the dread arising from free choice. Don't be fooled into believing that plants grow mechanically toward the sun, that birds choose their direction by instinct, that wildebeest migrate by design. In fact, everything is seeking. Your atoms can spread, but they cannot escape the search. A wide distribution does not shield you from wondering how best to spend your time. Once every few millennia, all of your atoms pull together again, traveling from around the globe like the leaders of nations uniting for a summit converging for their densest reunion in the form of a human. They are driven by nostalgia to regroup into the tight pinpoint geometry in which they began. In this form, they can relish a forgotten sense of holiday-like intimacy. They come together to search for something they once knew, but didn't appreciate at the time. The reunion is warm and heartening for a while, but it isn't long before they begin to miss their freedom. In the form of a human, the atoms suffer a claustrophobia of size. Gestures are agonizingly limited, restricted to the foundering of tiny limbs. As a condensed human, they cannot see around corners. They can only talk within short distances to the nearest ear. They cannot reach out to touch across any meaningful expanses. We are the moment of least facility for the atoms. And in this form, they find themselves longing to ascend mountains wander the seas, and conquer the air, seeking to recapture the limitlessness they once knew. See you soon, Internet.